Whoa, okay, okay, I'm live. Hello. Sorry for all this problem. I am very sorry about that. Um, I am having technical technical difficulties, but I'm trying to work it. And apparently I've already worked it out. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, good night. Um, my name is Miguel de Jesus Colón, peer mentor of, of the UPRH Creative Writing Workshop, and we are celebrating our heroic July with our sixth virtual workshop talking about the heroes of literature. So it's all about superheroes and epic heroes and anti-heroes and the chosen ones, all about that. And today, uh, we we have a menu, an exquisite menu about heroes of literature, and we have a critiquing of a short story, a flash fiction correction, of our colleague of the workshop, Dave Figueroa. So let's start. Let me see. It's visible now. Yes, Lily, I managed to work it work it out. Um. How many are watching you? Okay, hey, hi, Lily, hi. Lily, please um, share in the workshop, in the group, because we need more people, you know, and even though you're, they're going to watch this later. Let's start with the heroes of literature. Um, in the past video, I remember that Lily defined what was a hero, but I'm going to say a few definitions here from merriamwebster.com. Uh, the, uh, the full definition of, of hero is a mythological or legendary fig figure, often of divine descent, endowed with great strength or ability. Sorry. So basically, that is the beginning of how heroes start in literature. And they start with the epic poems of Greek and Greek writers and philosophers and authors like Homer and Virgil, but let's start with our first hero, um, Odysseus, or Ulysses in Roman myth. Um, Odysseus is the main character of the Odyssey by Homer, and basically he is this great hero that is very proud, he is very proud, but he goes on a journey to return home after Ten years and after the fall of the great city of Troy at the hands of the Greek. And basically, this is a plot overview of the Odyssey. is the journey back home of Odysseus um, after the Trojan War and the fall of Troy to return to his wife Penelope and his son Telemachus to the kingdom of Ithaca. marry Penelope and there's the main villain which is Antinous that wishes to kill Telemachus so he can become the king of Ithaca because everybody thought that Odysseus is dead. Let me see if, if I'm still alive. Yep, I'm still alive. Okay. Basically, um, basically Odysseus is one of the main figures of what is an epic he an epic hero in the beginning of literature before Christ BC of course and here are some of the characteristics of Odysseus he is strong courageous noble thirsty for glory confident proud arrogant and very intellectual he uses his intellect for disguising himself when he arrives to Ithaca as a as a hobo, if you can say, and uses deceive in his speech so he can manipulate people to however he wants them to act. For example, um, when he escapes the island that Calypso, a nymph, traps him, he uses manipul uh, manipulation to get away from the island, even though he likes living in that island with Calypso because he even says that no one can compare to the nymph Calypso. He prefers her over his wife. But anyway, he, he has to go. 
because he is a king, sorry. And he overcomes many trials during the 10 years that takes him to return to Itaca, like the escape from, like I said, Calypso's Island, defeating the Sears with the help of his son, Telemachus. It's, it has all the ingredients to be the perfect recipe of an epic poem, which is the powerful, almighty hero that is bestowed and has power over the gods and bless him. Um, the villain that wants to become a king and be become powerful. And basically, that's it for the, uh, the Odyssey. It's an epic poem, so everything is lyrical, and this is the beginning of poetry and how heroes are portrayed to our time. Um, eh, Dark Angelox, with, which I think is um, someone, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> let's continue with Jesus. Let's continue with the second epic hero from the Aenidae, the Español, which is Aeneas. Basically, this is what happens to the people that were defeated in Troy and had to flee that city, the Trojans that had to flee the city after the Greek invaded them, which is basically what happens in the Odyssey before the, the, the Iliad. And Aeneas, basically this is a story of the fate that you are obligated by the gods to do. And Aeneas' goal was to start a new city in Rome after the fall of Troy. Um, I'm not going to tell what happens because I want you to read all this epic poetry because it, because it is so good. And... Give me a break, sorry. <laughs> I lost a page. Okay. He basically just drifts around with a couple of, of Trojans in the Mediterranean Sea in search of Rome, the city that Aeneas is destined to find. And due to bad weather and these harpies that curse them, the Trojans, they end up in Carthage, where they meet a Phoenician princess called Dido that had to flee her home as well as the Trojans. And she helps the Trojans and listens to Aeneas' retelling of the fall of Troy. And basically, once the gods remind Aeneas that he cannot stay in Carthage, Carthage and have a happy life with Dido, the queen of that place, he needs to leave the city. And basically, the story continues over there until they find Rome. And they help with the Roman Empire to become gr the greatest empire for a long time. So that's like what happens. Here are some of the characteristics of the hero. He is the son of a goddess, Venus, and a human and has special divine protection. Characteristic of the epic heroes. He is a chosen one because he needs to lay the foundations in Ita Ita Italy for the glory of the Roman Empire after the fall of Troy. And he is an innate leader who follows prophecy and destiny and order because things need to happen the way that the gods have destined things to happen. And even though he is unhappy because he leaves Dido, the princess, who they fall in love with each other because he needs to do the, the bidding of the gods. And, and just a hint, the Dido kills herself because she cannot live in a world without Aeneas. And he is a compassionate and sympathetic towards the injured and the weary of the travels that of the Trojan that travel with him in search of Rome. So we see here that we see a difference between the the character um, Aeneas and Odysseus. Odysseus is very prou is proud and very arrogant and then we have this more human side of a hero that cares for the people and cares for making things doing things the way they are and how they are supposed to be that was my mom I'm sorry okay 
let's continue with the ne next hero in literature. And I assume that many of you have seen the movie or something, but have not read the epic poem. I, I haven't read it. But I know about it. I know about it. Um, Beowulf. Beowulf which is the first modern English language poem of British literature. And basically, Da, he is the main character of the epic poem Beowulf, written by an anonymous, because we still don't know who that person is. Here's a, an overview. I really wanted to escape and not read Beowulf, but after I've read what happens, like a little bit, I'm, I'm partially interested. King Hrothgar of Denmark builds a great meat hall called Heorot, which causes lively music and jubilance that angers a demon called Grendel, who lives in the swamplands of Denmark and the kingdom of Hrothgar, and terrorizes the Danes at night and kills them, the Grendel, the, the villain, the demon. Beowulf, after heeding King Hrothgar's plight, and he's John, young, a little boy, teen boy, accepts the challenge and travels to Denmark to defeat Grendel. And that is just the beginning of many stories that even include Grendel's mom and a dragon. And it's a lifespan, you know, a life, a lifeline, a timeline of events from Beowulf young until he becomes old and adult and an adult. Here are the characteristics of this hero. Like I said, this poem is divided in youth and in adulthood, and his heroism is also divided likewise. As a youthful warrior, he follows a Germanic code of heroism, the Germanic code, which is in Europe, loyalty, courtesy, and pride. He also exhibits tremendous strength, courage, and bravery. Side note, I said courage, and, I, and it reminded me of the dog. That's fun. He's a hero also. He is a hero. And since he's young, Beowulf, he's young, he's able to kill any monster as he pleases because he's strong, courageous, and brave. But when he becomes an adult and a king, because Rothar becomes a father figure to him, he no longer exhibits this heroic aura, but still he follows a Germanic code to rule over Denmark. Because he is a wise ruler who respects and puts above everything respect and loyalty. That's Beowulf for you. Interesting, right? It's, it's not, let me see if you're chatting. Hey, where are the people at? Uh, say hero. Oh my god, wait. Say hero. <laughs> okay. Okay. We jump a timeline, a lot of events, a lot of people, and let me see. Okay, it's just that I have a friend of mine in, to, in Facebook talking about, and she says that I read that one, uh, the Laneda, and Dido's Lament. It's a cute play with a really sad and lovely music, and she said Beowulf is crappy. I'm interested anyway. I'm interested. British poetry is actually delicious, you know. Um, let's continue. Sorry. <laughs> now we are going to jump to Spanish, Spanish, Peninsular Spanish. Talk about yes, Don Quixote de la Mancha, because he his figure has transcended into universal literature. And we cannot talk about heroes without talking about the wannabe hero. Because, you know, he wanted to be a, a knight errant, you know, errant and a knight. This, no, this is a big novel that I had to read last semester for my introduction to Spanish literature, too, by Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra. Uh, plot overview, quickly. These are the adventures of Don Quixote and his squire Sancho Panza, Don Quixote, throughout 17th century Spain, where there are no more heroes like that beautiful epic 
epic hero for that began the Spanish literature, El Mio Cid, the Mio, the, the Mio Cid. And I forgot to mention him. He's very important too. He's an epic hero with all the previous characteristics of the heroes that make a, that echo to past Greek mythology and Greek epicness regarding epic heroes, poetry, right? Basically, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza have this great adventures like the windmills, the various stops in the castles that Don Quixote thinks that there are castles in his wild imagination, that everything he sees reminds him of uh, an epic poem of previous errant knights like, and epic heroes. Basically, his imagination like destroys it and wants it to be what he has read in his stories, and he wants to um, um, copy what he's read and do it in 17th century Spain. Now, there's also the Crusades and his defeat at the hands of another knight called the Knight of the White Moon. Um, personal thought, the uh, Quixote is delicious. It is very good, but it's so long and tedious. <laughs> I don't even know how I got an A in that class, you know. She says that, she, my friend says that, don't mention me. I didn't even mention your name. Okay. Characteristics of Don Quixote. He is gaunt, middle-aged, very old, and has gone mad from reading too many books about chivalrous knights and is determined to go on a great adventure just to please his lady love. Those But even though that he might be mad, he has a sense of purpose and beauty you you need and um a kingdom it's i heard something i heard something a little bit Wandering Knight, sorry, Abella, Lily, thank you, thank you. Just that it, it says it like Knight Errant Tree. But, okay. Yes, there were, exactly, there were no knights in Spain for that in that time. So basically, he just was insane and wanted to do what the previous knights ever did. If it is lagging, it is. Okay, sorry, I was reading about the lagging feed, and I hope I just checked that it was like okay. Um, let's continue so we can go to the critiquing of the of the short story, of Dave's short story. Huck Finn, Huckleberry Finn. North American literature. He appears in the novel by Mark Twain, the novels, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and that one about Tom Sawyer. Um, basically, plot overview. These are the adventures of Huck Finn, a poor class white boy, and his friend Tom Sawyer through the Mississippi River, River and the town of St. Petersburg, Missouri. Fictional, right? And, you know, 19th century racism, how you should, how you should act because you're a white boy, but you were... You're surrounded by these black people and environment in that century. Okay, just like, you know, same. Feed is that. It's better now. Okay. 
Um, basically, Huckleberry Finn is the this free-spirited hero of North American literature because even though he is a child, he need he he doesn't want to save the world, but he questions it and says, "But why do we have to act like this?" Because because society no. He even creates his own rules towards the people that surround him. And let me see what I found here about the characteristics of our hero, Huck Finn. In the beginning of the novel, Mark Twain makes it clear that Huck is a boy who comes from the lowest levels of white society. So he is dirty and frequently homeless because his father is a drunk addict. Um, he has natural intelligence and his willingness to think through a situation on its own merits lead him to some conclusions that are correct in their context, but what would shock white society. See what I'm saying here? He is a free-spirited hero, as I say, as I said, that wants to break with what society has already established. Let's see. Um, for example, he knows that lying is in that moment when he encounters a group of slave hunters, lying is the correct course of action because he doesn't want the black the, the black slaves to be hunted down by these slave hunters. So it's like he makes his own choice and says, No, this is wrong. No, America, you do not do that to the black people of that century. You know. Let me continue. Um he creates his own rules. Even though he is not, even though he is not an independent moral genius, he is still must struggle with some of the preconceptions about blacks that society has ingrained in him. You see, he wants to break away from that, and he does. And he is appealing and sympathetic, like a hero should be, charismatic. But he is still a boy that is learning about society, the imperfect society that he was born in. But he is capable of thinking away and straying away from those paradigms that people have established between uh, between what is between black and white people. You know, that is a hero. Like wow, super awesome. Okay, let me see if I have any comments or oh, if I did something wrong. Let's see. No, I did not. Okay. Let's continue because we are two characters down. I mean, away. Sorry. Our next character, written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, is the established and the elementary Mr. Watson, Sherlock Holmes. And why is he considered a hero? Basically, he is considered a hero because he is the great detective of our era, of our era, and he is one of the most recognizable figures of world literature, even though he is very difficult to tap into because he is clever minded and has an, may have a tranquil but exuberant personality. But he is very acute when it comes to knowing which are the clues to solve a mystery. Basically, Sherlock Holmes is part of a of novels and short stories of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Like, if it ain't broke, you don't need to fix it. If it ain't broke, you don't need to fix it. So he like used Sherlock Holmes to develop these stories. And even though that Holmes is not a realistic, well-rounded character. Oh wait, I have something here. Yes, finally, Holmes. <laughs> but I'm talking about the literary Holmes, you know. Um, even though he is not a realistic, well-rounded character, he is capable of more complicated emotions. Um, he may dis uh, display warm friendship for his dear Watson, but usually he rebuffs his friend's attempts to find out what he is thinking. Here we have maybe a Don Quixote Sancho Panza relationship, but Holmes is more human, you know, and okay, and basically I'm reading what I found because it's a lot of information. Because Holmes, even though Holmes is a character that we uh, that is kind of difficult to tap in, he is likable and he is a hero because he saves the day through the crime and he solves the crimes. 
he becomes a recognizable figure and he become and he shows great courage and he may be a uh, illustrious warrior because he saves the day and saves the crime I mean that solves the cases we have a homes reader here okay nice um he is very eccentric okay and he will go from one extreme to the other so Holmes is a character that we maybe hate or love, but we're going to end up loving. And some of the stories that he has been, that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle has made him appear as the Red-Headed League and the short and the novels, The Hound of Baker's Baskersville. Did I say it right? Let me see if I said, if I said it right. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I said it right. Nice. Okay. So Holmes, he is not the chosen one. He is not basically. He just does the cases because he needs to do the cases. I need to read about him. The Hound of Bas Baskervilles. Okay, the Hound of Baskervilles. Now let's move on away from the detective. We have talked about epic heroes that defeat giant mythological creatures. We have talked about which are Aeneas, the uh, Odysseus, and Beowulf. We have talked about we have talked about wannabe heroes and knights, wandering knights like Don Quixote. We have talked about um, free spirited American heroes like Huckleberry Finn. We have talked about detective like elementary Mr. Watson, Sherlock Holmes, but now let's go let Harry Potter. Duh. We cannot talk about heroes. Wait, wait, wait. My friend is writing me. Okay, she knows. Harry Potter. Harry Potter has made a name on it, on itself, on himself, basically. Written by J.K. Rowling. Um, seven books from the beginning in which Harry knows you're a wizard until he defeats defeats Lord No Nos, aka Voldemort. Um, what makes Harry such a complex character? He is basically treated ha treated as a chosen one, and he carries with that burden. Wait, <laughs> she's liking this. I say Harry Potter, and she's like yes. He basically carries the burden of the people telling him you are the chosen one that will defeat Lord Voldemort but he just doesn't understand and quite grasp the wizarding world because he did not live in it he is a victim of it by the time we know him in the book he's just developing this heroic um, personality personality that already sorts him into the Gryffindor house because Gryffindors has, have this optimistic charismatic good willing um, traits that make him a hero. That's hence he is in Gryffindor. By the time that we read him, that we read his changes, that he wants to be a normal teenager, but he still has to defeat and do these things because he goes with his gut. He goes with his emotional. He has the back of two of the people of his friends that have lived between this wizarding world, like Hermione and her wits, and run with his charisma and his, hey, go on, let's do this. But Harry Potter is a hero that acts upon his emotions. And that's why we love him. At the end of the book, uh, at the end of the series, in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, we see that Harry has defining traits such as bravery, determination, and self-sacrifice. A martyr, if you can say. Let me see if... Okay. A martyr, if you can say. A martyr? Martyr. You know what I mean. And... He, end up, he ends up for fulfilling this prophecy of being the chosen one, and then he's a hero. He saves the wizarding, wizarding world from the evil clutches of Lord Nonos, a.k.a. Voldemort. So let's round this up. Characters, uh, there are many more heroes, of, uh, heroes in our literature. For example, let me just mention a few. Frodo Baggins of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That basically he is also a chosen one because he has to put the ring and everything like my precious I'm gonna help with that Thor in Norse mythology is also considered a hero of um, 
like I said, of mythology. Wait, let me see. A side note, Harry was supposed to go to Slytherin because he is brave and a leader, but he chose uh, he chose Gryffindor because he cares about other people more than himself. Harry, you sly bastard. <laughs> oh, you were, well, that explains why he talks parcel mouth, right? Tongue? He talks to snakes. Um, we have other heroes like in folklore, Robin Hood, and we have the female hero, Elizabeth Bennet, that it is even considered uh, a hero because Elizabeth Bennet strays away from what this fairy tale princess or fairy tale dame should be, and he she is established as a romantic character. Uncle Tom. She she will kill me. It's a fact of Harry Potter. It's cool. Tom Riddle. Oh, oh yeah. Um, we have Mowgli from the Jungle Book also, and I'm reading this novel right now. Winston Smith from 1984 by George Orwell. Jesus, read that novel. It's so good. And he's basically like a hero that nobody wants to be in that situation and world that he lives in where everybody is watching you. Big Brother is watching you. Yes. Okay. Now, now that, ha that I have talked about a little bit of the characters, because there are so many characters in the spectrum of heroes and epicness, let's go to what we came down for. Let's talk about the flash fiction that our friend David Figueroa, David Figueroa, has written for us called Trade Gone Wrong. I don't know if I have time to read it, but if you want to um, have it while I critique it or any of you want to critique it and say something about it, it's in the group, in the group of Facebook, and it's in a post that he made. He actually added it like a file, so you can go under file, and the short story trade gone wrong should be there. Lilibeth, do you wish to join me in this critique, or no? Well, I'll read that later. Okay, let's talk about trade gone wrong. First of all, congratulations, because it is a flash fiction. Um, I liked it a lot. I might as well, this is like personal opinion, obviously. Personal opinion. Um, I kind of got lost because I don't know so much about guns. and But I do appreciate that you used a lot of gun-related machinery, war, combat vocabulary. Because the vocabulary works so well with the story. And it gives it a flow. And this actually works. I feel like Trade Gone Wrong is a dystopian short story. And it is very well developed. Okay. I will read the short story then. Trade Gone Wrong by David Figueroa. And it reads, and I'm sorry, let me just... Okay. Sunrise. The crack of gunfire echoes through the plain. I'm running for cover, hiding and ducking behind every rock Two or more meters high. Now behind me, a pack of atom dogs are out of my blood. Are out, are, are out for my blood. Why? Fuck knows why. The Vegas barter circuit is full of lies and deceit, and I seem to be the unlucky target of a witch hunt on a weapon trade gone wrong. The title makes no sense, considering considering I'm a card carry member of the Vegas Honest Trade Alliance. But then nothing really makes sense anymore. Not after the war 50 years ago, hydrogen bombs and warheads dropped upon any city containing more than 500,000 people. Old folks say the rockets blooded the skies. And when the bombs landed, the whole city, the whole sky turned red. Now the desert is an irradi irradiated hellhole, a veritable wasteland. Some major cities are still around, but for the most part, we lost a few billion people since then, lucky for me. I landed next to what remains of Las Vegas. Papi always said Vegas was a shithole. 
guess not much changes even after thermonuclear war. Come out, you slimy motherfucker. We're gonna eat your limbs for dinner. I had wandered deep into a small stone forest. Guess, guess they were starting to get pissed now. I couldn't stay long in it, though. I had at least five dogs behind me. And if there's one thing about atom dogs, they cover space quickly. Shoot. Sorry. I stand from my crouch position and begin running towards a round boulder overlooking half the crevice. One of them saw and fired at me. Too bad their, their pistols are shit. Peek, peeking from the side, I saw two of them head towards me, one reloading his pistol. I fired both barrels from my shotgun. It took down one while wounding the other one with the spread. The blast must have worn the others, though, and I had to move quickly before one of them flanked me. I had luckily hit the other bandit in his shooting arm, and he dropped his weapon in agony. Liking it so far, right? Mm. I quickly ran towards him and kicked him. I quickly run towards him and kick him square in the face while taking his pistol and the magazine he was about to load. I holster and quickly jump behind a rock as another one of the bandits had spotted me. I had no use this time around, and I hated doing this. God knows grenades are fucking expensive, but I set it off and began to cook it. Three and a half seconds in, and I threw the pineapple behind the rock. Grenade, poor bastard, should have taken cover. I love that part. The shrapnel, the shrapnel hit another guy nearby him in the chest, and he couldn't help by, but scream in pain. I was instantly alerted to his position and dashed behind another rock and unholstered the stolen pistol and took a couple of pot shots at him, hit him here in the thigh and stomach, four down, one ago, just my luck. It was the, the set, and he had a submachine gun and a Kevlar vest. Looks like I'm going to have to go heavy duty for this. I reloaded my shotgun and ran to another rock. I turned on my helmet sound detector to see if he was behind me. Wait, I just remembered something. Yay! Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to go heavy duty for this. I reloaded my shotgun and ran to another rock. I turned on my helmet sound detector to see if he was behind me. Sure enough, he was. I took out a tape recorder and rewound it. And then I pressed play while I threw it behind cover. You and all your friends are dead. That's right, you assholes are worth shit. How about you get over here and plead for mercy? And maybe then I will kill your sorry ass. Sorry. <laughs> okay. The lone bandit smiled through his mask and ran. Leader of the said. Okay. The lone bandit smiled through his mask and ran silently toward his the rock. I got you now, you motherfucker. He carefully sneaks behind the rock and begins firing his submachine gun wildly through the area until it ran out of ammo. Once the smoke cleared, he saw nothing but the remains of a shot to hell tape recorder. What the... He mumbled. Bad decision, buddy. I said as he turned around. As soon as he did that... As soon as he did, uh, as he did that... I fired both barrels from my shotgun directly into his chest, pushing him straight to the ground. I wasn't going to take any chances, though. I quickly drew my pistol and fired three times into his head. Into his head. Bam, bam, bam. It's official. He and his set were either dead or dying. The sun had finally risen as an I, and as I exited the stone forest, its searing hot fist finally hitting the battered wastes. Vegas still shone in the distance. And what the hell? I could probably make some good money off this SMG. SMG. Just as soon as I dislodge the ball on the weapon, not like anyone's gonna notice anyway. This story, though.
<laughs> that's hot. I really like this story a lot. Even though that it leaves me wanting more, I like it a lot. I really do. I appreciate it, David. It's very good, and I'm happy that you made Flash Fiction, like most of you do. Thank God. <laughs> and basically, there is this vocabulary, this dense vocabulary, vocabulary that is so exquisite because you, I picture myself in this combat field or in, in this dystopian Vegas where he is being chased by these five people, by this, by the people that want to kill him, and it is good, you know. They're gonna have his limbs for dinner, and they're. I, I really the only problem that I have here is the use of punctuation marks that could be used in some place that you don't use because you prefer to use comments. But you know, sometimes when you use so much comments. You t maybe a lot of in the workshop is a recurrent mistake that I also do that many of us do that we want to use the commas to continue an idea but a period can stop an idea but continue the idea also or say my Colin you know just don't rely on the on the commas please um I really don't find anything wrong with this story I really like it. It it smells hero. It, it smells dystopian hero. Um, world gone wrong after the war. Survivorish. Um, there's a video game that talks about that. All of us. One of us. Something like that. But it's very good. Somebody does. Anybody else have something to say? To say. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, Lily. Oh, sorry, sorry, Christian. I'm I'm still learning about the screen share stuff. So sorry. Um. Yes, like Lily on a lily pad says, it's good, but some parts don't flow clearly, and it's basically because of the grammar. And I will add the punctuation. But overall, the story has an excellent introduction, an open ending that screams for a part two. Because I really want to know what happens to this unnamed motherfucker, <laughs> because that's basically the name that we get about. But we get about him, you know, all these swear words and all of that. But it's good because it goes with the with the environment that it's situated. This Vegas desert, thermonuclear war, dystopian. It's it's great. I applaud you, and I love how you made a whole universe talking about Adam Dogs, the Vegas Honest Straight Alliance, a little, even a little bit of fictional history about an alliance, and how a billion people died in the United States or maybe even the world because, right? And the image you can see how the the bombs fall, and you see the red sky, and it's it's very good. David, I really love this story. I really do. Yeah. We have another fr uh, colleague from the workshop that says that she loved this post. She loved the post apocalyptic flash fiction. It was easy to follow and full of action. And she wishes for you to continue this story. So we want a second part. Trade gone right. Uh -huh. no. Okay. I was trying to be funny. Hmm. Um, she will kill me. Okay. So, I think that's it. That's about it. Okay. Exactly, Christian, what Lily Beth said. And exactly what our colleague said in the story, the it's in first person and first person I really don't like to write in first person but it's so good because it has this 
do you see character development in the way he talks and the sarcasm and the irony of it all and how confident he is because he knows he is going to kill those five Adam dogs. He's going to kill some more folks. Yeah. And yes, Christian, like Liliana Lillipad said, flash fiction is fiction that is extremely brief, only typically only a few hundred words or fewer in its enti entirety. Right. Uh, Christian, I shared uh, an article in the UPRH group, uh, the workshop. You can tap into that. It talks about some um, steps on how to write flash fiction, and it's very good. One of the steps that it says is that this the flash fiction does not end in the ending. It ends in the middle because you don't want the reader to feel like, <laughs> wait, what? That's the ending? The ending is the ending? You need to end it before before the uh, before you end it. Yeah, that's what you get for for writing. I mean, for reading stuff. But flash fiction it's basically a, a, a more modern um, movement, and it it's it responds to our society because nowadays young uh, teenagers don't want to read a lot of. They don't trust me. They don't want to read this. No, they want to read this, and it's not all of them. It's a few of them because I know that all of us don't mind reading a dictionary if it's good. Okay, so let me just make a few uh, quick review of what we talked about. We made a very broad. Lily, I'll respond about that. Um, um, let's um. I was caught off guard. Um, we talked about the spectrum of the heroes from the epic poetry to the fantastic world of wizards. Okay, And in between we have a lot of other heroes. But let's not confuse heroes with main character. Okay? <laughs> Jesus, I'm sorry. I, <clears throat> exactly, and <laughs> I just, they just told me if I was high, I've written a dictionary. <laughs> yes, I am high, y'all on. Um, and we talked about these characteristics of the hero. They are so different from proud heroes that and destined heroes, and those heroes that are heroes because they are the chosen one, like whatever. But basically, for this, why are we talking about heroes? Because, first of all, it is a fun topic. It is very broad. You can talk about heroes in literature, in graphic novels, in comic books, in TV series, in manga, anything you want. We have a lot of heroes in pop culture. And many of the heroes in literature have transcended into pop culture, such as Sherlock Holmes, Harry Potter, and who else? Um... Huckleberry Finn, let's talk about. And we have heroes in graphic novels and in anime and in manga. Like, let's talk about series. Um, Finn the Human, Naruto, um, Luffy of One Piece, and he comic book heroes, Superman, Batman, all, all of that that have transcended into pop culture and that we 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 talk about heroes and we just immediately think about them. And in literature too, you know, like right now I read, I am reading 1984 by George Orwell, and my representation of a hero is Winston Smith, the character, which is awesome. And okay, I'm rambling. What will you do for the last workshop? Wait, no, wait, before that, before that. Oh my god, yes, Korra! <laughs> the Legend of Korra and Avatar, of course! <laughs> Am I high? <laughs> How can I not say that? Um, let me respond to Lily. I'm not a first place person hater. It's just that the universe is so limited to this in first person. I really don't like that. I really want the reader to know all that's happening around. And yes, Christian. The story trade gone wrong does feel like a like a video game, a video game 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm RPG, role playing, yeah. I hope that you don't, you didn't listen to that. Okay, I'll s close the workshop. You will remember that you, in the last workshop, you need to talk about, I mean, write an original short story, poem, anything um, about a hero that you create, an original hero that you like, that you will wish that people would like to know, and we're going to publish them, of course, in our blog. If you didn't know, we have a blog, uprhcwws.blogspot.com. And with your permission, we will, we will upload the stories and we will critique them. Please, we upload the stories in the group so other members can critique, the, critique them because the only cre uh, people that critique is Lily and me. And me and you need to start developing criti uh, critiquing skills. So, sayonara. This is all I have to say for today. Go on Heroes, hashtag Heroic July, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at um, UPRH underscore CWWS. Like us on Facebook. Uh, you can search us by um, um, under UPRH Creative Writing Workshop. Like us. And be sure to watch our blog spot, like I said already. And that is all. That is all I will say today because I am rambling again. Heroic July. Bye bye. No bye bye. Wait wait wait. Lily, let's talk. Let's let's let's. I'll I'll talk about first person later. I need to close the 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 the, the workshop because I don't have anything else to say. I already talked about the heroes. So goodbye. Sayonara. Bye. Oh, okay. You have been watching the UPRH Creative Writing Workshop channel. Be sure to subscribe so you can see our live workshops every Thursday. Thank you.